Did you actually do it? Yeah. Wait, wait, was it for you, Sam? Was that for Sam got me so high. You just don't even know. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to uh, check homework tomorrow for the 6.3, 6.2. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to finish up on those homework, I'll send out a reminder this afternoon um, for you guys to hopefully get those done. So I can check those uh, tomorrow at the beginning of class. So today we're talking about snow fields. Um, it says homework handout, but I'm not, I want to sign homework for snow fields. I think we can cover a lot of that today as well as tomorrow in class. So the homework that uh, we're going to check tomorrow is just from Thursday and Friday from last week. Okay. So um, Thursday, we started going through solving differential equations algebraically, right? Separating the variables, but we saw how extensive these problems can be and time consuming as well. Um, so that's why I want us to uh, spend additional days working on those um, problems Tuesday and Wednesday. But the reason why it took so long is because we had to not only separate the variables, but then we got to go through our calculus process twice, right? Once on the left side, once on the right side, treat those like two separate problems. And then in the end, we still have to solve for y, and a lot of algebraic stuff comes into play to try to get that y by itself. Friday, uh, we solved differential equations. Uh, a lot of it was with this form, y prime equals ky. And if we went through and saw that differential equation, it's always going to end up in the form of y equals ce to the kt. So we didn't really do a lot of calculus once we recognized that pattern. But uh, our attention from there was uh, reading the word problems, gathering order pairs, solving for C, solving for K, and then finally using that information to solve for uh, the missing uh, uh, value that we're, um, that problem is asking for us to predict. Okay. So today uh, we're talking about slow fields, and slow fields is a, a graphical way of seeing the solution without having to um, find the solution in terms of algebraically. So not all different equation can be separated and solved. Now the ones that we are working on are ones that do work, but um, because not every one of them can be solved, uh, we can still visualize the solution without being an algebraic uh, uh, path towards solving it. So that's what we're going to be exploring today, um, a graphical uh, visualization of the solution um, uh, without having to go through the algebra portion of it. All right, so if you guys can turn to page seven. Okay, so let me just read through the notes here. Slow fields is a graphical approach to look at all solutions of a differential equation. So differential equation, all this means is it's a um, equation at the derivative level. So if you see any dy dx or dy dt, that's a differential equation. Uh, slow fields consist of short line segments representing a slope, and slope is just steepness, sketched at many different points. Okay. These line segments are tangent to a family of solution curves for the differential equation at various points. The tangents show the direction in which the solution, the solution curves will follow. And slow fields are useful in sketching solution curves without having to solve a differential equation algebraically. Okay, so let me run through the steps here. Uh, steps, first thing is identify order pairs indicated on the graph. So you can see below here, um, here you see some highlighted points, and those are the points that we are trying to sketch the slope fields for. Okay. Number two, plug in the order pair in the differential equation and find the slope. So we're going to identify each of the order pairs, okay, and then we're going to plug into the differential equation. So differential equation are these dy dx's that we see here, and I don't want us to feel like this dy dx is something that we haven't seen before, okay? Because if you think about first semester um, example, 
if the if a function was uh, let's say 2x squared plus 4x, then f prime, which is be 4x plus 4. And we know that the purpose of 4x plus 4 is to give you a slope information, right? If I give it, if I plug in 1, I get 8. And that 8 tells me the slope at, at a specific point. But dy dx does the same thing, okay? It's just a slope, it's just a derivative equation. It's just that it may look a little messier on the right side because it involves y, but it serves the same purpose as, as f prime for first semester. Okay? All it does is it takes in values and then it'll spit back a number and that number tells you how, st how steep the graph is at that point. Okay, So I don't want us to look at this feeling like we haven't seen this before. Um, concept wise, we've been working with this ever since first semester, right? It's just a slow formula. Okay, uh, from there, uh, we're going to get back a number. We're going to sketch a short, si a short line segment that represents the slope through the given point, and we'll repeat this for all the remaining order pairs. I have two more a piece of notes here, sentences, but I'm going to come back to this later after um, the second page when we can get a, have a, a perspective as to how to interpret these sentences here. Okay, so first thing, we're going to identify all the order pairs uh, that are highlighted. But I'm going to just put it in a specific order so that it'll be easier for us to match our uh, answers with each other. So I'm going to start at the um, the upper left corner. And we'll say that the first order pair we see is negative one, two. So we'll do negative one, two. Okay, so negative one, two represents this order pair here. Okay, now I'll go down the line here, negative one, one. Negative one zero here. This order pair is negative one, negative one. Okay, up here, order pair is one, two, one, 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 zero, and one, negative one. Okay, so one order pair at a time, we're going to insert into the derivative formula and we're going to translate what to do with that slope. So negative one goes in for x, two goes in for y. I get negative one minus four, which is negative five. It says y prime there, but y prime is just another way of saying dy dx. So I'm going to interpret negative five through this uh, order pair here. We know it's a pretty, we know it's going to be a negative slope. We know the, the slope is going to uh, fall from left to right, and it's a pretty steep negative slope. So accuracy is not that important as long as you just try your best to sketch a ballpark value as to what that slope could be, what that slope could look like, and that'll be good enough. Okay. Next up, negative one, one. So negative one in for x, one in for y, I get negative one minus two, which is negative three. So I want to create a negative three slope through this point. It's not as steep as negative five, so I'll make it a little bit more gradual. Again, the accuracy is not that important for us, right? As long as you can create and understand um, what to do with those, uh, how to interpret the order pair into the derivative equation and, uh, and the slope value, that's good enough. Okay, next up, negative one zero, so negative one in for x, zero in for y. I'm just going to get negative one. Okay. Next up, negative one, negative one, so negative one in for x, negative one in for y, I get negative one plus two, which is one. So now I want to create a positive slope of one through this point here. Okay, any questions so far? All right, so I'm going to fill out the rest of this chart here. One, two, minus four. Okay. 
1 in for x, 1 in for y, 1 minus 2. Then 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay, any questions here? Okay, let me organize the order pair so we can kind of match our answers a little bit easier here. Yeah, basically the same uh, order as we had before. Okay, so I think we know what to do with positive and negative slopes, right? We're just going to make our best estimation as to what those those look like. Um, but sometimes we, we may be getting um, ones that are not positive or negative. So I want to kind of just go through those examples real quick. Let's say we plugged in an order pair and let's say what our dy dx ended up giving us zero over three. Okay. How would you interpret zero over three? That's just zero, right? So if it's zero, what we're going to do is if this through that if this through an order pair, you're just going to create a horizontal line okay, to indicate slope zero. Okay, so that's one example of of a slope that is neither positive nor negative. Okay, here's another option that I want you to be aware of. What if I plugged in the order pair and it ended up giving me like five over zero? That's not fine. Okay. Well, so yes, you could interpret it as a vertical line. But for us, for slow fields, we're just going to leave that that point um, untouched. It'll be empty. So if you see undefined slope, you're not going to touch that point, even though you may be thinking, oh, wait, that's a vertical line. But for us, slow field, that just means nothing will exist at that point. So leave the order pair empty. It won't exist, so we're not even going to put anything there. Okay, so I'll see if you guys can fill out the rest of um, rest of the chart and then populate your slow field with those specific slopes. Yeah, just draw those short line segments. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we'll get a better idea on the second page because right now it just feels like a random sort of points, a random assortment of points that don't give us any information. But um, we're going to see on the second page where it's going to become hopefully more clear as to how this can even help us. Or how, you know, how does it even tell us information about the differential equation? Check your answer when you get a chance. We do have two undefined slots, so a negative one zero and one zero. You're not going to touch those points. Those points will just be, those just remain um, as they are. Okay. Any questions so far? 
So there's going to be two purposes uh, that uh, we're going to uh, try to uh, accomplish today. One is creating a slow field. Uh, I think this is the easier one, right? You just take the order pair, know what to do with them, insert into your derivative equation, get back a number, and then try your best to interpret that number uh, as a slope. Um, on the AP exam or even on the test, the most you're going to have to do is to create is just maybe six to ten points. OK, so. Um, but because of that, uh, we're not really getting a good picture, right? We're really looking at these as just a, a, a various, very sparse information about the graph. It doesn't really form a picture for us. Um, but we're really not going to be able to get a full picture unless we do a lot of lot more points, like 100 points over the course of a, a coordinate plane. Okay, we're never going to have to create anything that is as tedious as that, but that's, that goes to the second purpose we're going to have to do today is if you're given a full filled out slope field, can you match that slope field with the appropriate differential equation? So that's what we're going to try to accomplish on the second page. Okay, but any questions so far here? Okay, let's go to the second page here uh, or next page. This is uh, page eight. Now this is a filled out slope field. Okay, you can see that, you know, we never want to create this from scratch, but if you're given a full filled out slope field, you're able to see a potential graph a lot more easily, but I'm going to kind of help lead us to that point. Okay. So it says um, determine the differential equation being graphed by each of the slope fields below, then sketch a solution that passes through the indicated point. So you see all these short line segments through given order pairs here. Okay, but I want to kind of give us some structure in terms of, you know, how do we even begin interpreting a slow field? So I'm going to try to go through kind of four categories um, that can help us identify some um, characteristics that will be helpful for us. Okay, so four characteristics. To look for. Okay, so the first characteristic is do we see a collection of slope zeros? Do we see any slope zeros along the slope field here? Okay, let me go through each of the uh, um, characteristics and then we're going to go down each of these and and look at the graph specifically. Okay, so do we see any slope zeros? Uh, the second uh, characteristic is do we see any slope undefined? And you can tell undefined slope if you see a gap in the graph. If you see a graph where there's nothing, no line segments through the order pair, then you're looking, then you're able to visually identify where slope is undefined. Okay. Uh, the third characteristic is, do we see a collection of slope positives? Do we see a collection of positive slopes? And then do we see a collection of slope negatives? Can we make some general observations as to where we see a negative slopes? OK, so let's start with the first one here. Okay, Where do you see slope zero for this graph? OK, more specifically, x equals zero, right? Right along that x, sorry, that y axis. So I'm going to make that observation here. I'm going to say when x is equal to zero, I should be getting dy dx equal to zero. OK, and if we're able to list out these characteristics, what, what that, how that can help us is we can insert into our answer choices and we can eliminate the ones that that are obviously wrong. OK, so I think with multiple choice problems on on the AP exam, you want to list out characteristics, eliminate the wrong ones. If you're down to one and two, then you can look at more specific uh, characteristics. OK, do you see any slope undefined? Do you see any noticeable gaps where there's no line segments shown? Not really, right? We really don't see a, any gap that we can see. So 
Uh, we'll leave that alone. Okay. Do we see a collection of positive slopes? Okay. Where? Yeah. Pretty much good. Yeah. Pretty much everywhere, right? So that is a that's a nice characteristic to say out loud because that means if anything gives us negative slope, we can eliminate as well. So, so we're going to say mostly positive slopes. Except where we've already indicated uh, where the slope zero. Now, I do want to point something out here. These at the edges of the graph, they these almost look like vertical lines, right? But I don't want us to ever look at these lines and think, oh wait, that slope undefined. Because if it's slope undefined, it really shouldn't even be there. So if you see some of that, that's a that looks like a vertical line. It just means it's a very very steep slope. Okay, so. I don't want us to ever look at this saying, oh wait, this is a slope undefined, but if it if you see a line segment, that means that slope does exist. It just means it's a really steep slope. Okay. So um, when x equals zero, my slope is equal to zero, mostly positive slopes. What that means is if I can even if I can even see or imagine a negative value coming out of my derivative, I can eliminate it. So I'm gonna start here because I think this is the one that will help me eliminate. A lot of wrong choices here. OK, so I'm going to go down each of the choices and you can tell me, do we keep or eliminate? DYD equals x cubed. Eliminate, right? You can imagine this x cubed can be easily negative. If I just give it a negative 2 or negative 1, it's obviously negative, but we don't see any negatives here. So this is obviously not showing, matching what we see in front of us. OK, 3x squared, keep or eliminate? keep because 3x squared will always be what? Positive, right? Doesn't matter what negative value you give it, anything squared will be positive. So we'll come back to this. If there's any other options, we can, but at least we can, we can keep this for, uh, for future uh, decisions. Okay, dy dx equals 2x plus y. Keep or eliminate? Eliminate, yeah, because you can imagine 2x plus y being negative, right? If y is a large enough negative value, that 2x is not going to uh, make it positive. So x over y. Okay. Is it possible for x over y to be negative? Yeah. Yes, right? If if x is positive, if these have opposite signs, that could be negative, right? Now, I do want to point something out here is that, yeah, we're going to eliminate this. But if you're ever if you ever see slope undefined, that usually indicates that there is a variable in the denominator that's causing that to happen. So, um, yeah, I just want to point that out. If you see something in the denominator that indicates there is should be undefined something showing up on the graph, there should be some blank spaces um, if if it's truly matching with a variable in the denominator. OK, next one, uh, natural log of X. So natural log of X will give us positive values, but natural log only exists where? Uh, to the right of the Y axis, right? So it can't take a negative value. If it was natural log of negative five, it should be undefined. So this left side should be completely be empty if this were the true matching of this graph. So this is not going to be it either. OK, so the only option we have is 3x squared. This is easier in the sense that, OK, we don't have to do any more additional detailed um, uh, did, you know, work. We already know what our answer is. OK, but I do want to extend this a little bit because I also want to look at the picture of this graph and have that give us uh, some connection with this differential equation. But uh, I think we can only do that if we can see the solution. So let's do what we did last Thursday and let's solve this differential equation. Okay, we're extending this question a bit, but I want us to be able to look at this slope field and and see a picture out of this. Okay, so dy dx equals 3x squared. I'm going to set this up for cross multiplying. All right, so cross multiply. Okay. Remember, cross multiplying may not separate your variables, but it will get your dy and dx's locked into their right spots. Okay. So 
I'm going to go after the, the dy side first. So one dy is equal to inner uh, uh, 3x squared dx. Okay, so if you look, dy dx's are in the right places. That's good. We're not going to move them anymore. Um, now, do we have full separation of variables? Yes, okay. Y is on the left, X is on the right. The left side is as minimal as possible. We can't move anything back over to the right side, so we're good. We can take the integral of both sides, okay? Once, uh, do one side at a time. What's the integral of one dy? Just y. Just y, okay, good. There's a plus C, but that plus C will save for the right side. Okay, what does 3x squared turn into? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Threes cancel out. Now, this is the solution, okay? What does x cubed graph look like? Yes, yeah, a squiggly line, positive slope, right? So this is what x cubed looks like. Do you see the shape on the slope field? Yes, okay, so that's the connection I want to make. The slope field is going to match with the picture of the solution. Okay. Now, it says um, sketch the solution through the indicated point. So you're just going to follow that point and just kind of follow the path of the graph through that point. And you see a variation of x cubed show up. And that plus C is also indicated with the slope field because that plus C is just shifting the graph up and down all across the Y axis. So if it was X cubed plus 10, it'll be all the way up here. If it was X cubed minus five, it'll be all the way down here. So the slope field kind of gives you all the different variations that an X cubed plus C could look like. Okay. Now, briefly, I want to go back to page seven, and I want to talk about the two sentences that I skipped over here. On page seven, I skipped over these sentences, and I think now we can kind of have some perspective. Use the differential equation to find the individual slope segments that creates a slope field. So if you're at the derivative level, you're looking at each of the order pairs and trying to match up the order pairs with the, with the slope, um, uh, slope field. If you're at the solution level, right, if you can get it out of this out of the derivative level into the solution level, then you're almost taking a step back and looking at the picture as a whole. The picture as a whole should resemble the solution that you have in front of you. Right. So that's what I mean when let's say we were unable to solve this differential equation because we were unable to set uh, separate the variables or Let's say uh, the rules that we have uh, available are not enough to solve this differential equation. If we can create a slope field, we can still imagine what the solution could look like, even if we were unable to solve this differential equation. So that's really the purpose of slope field. It gives us another option to look at a solution if we were unable to solve. But here, we're able to solve it, and I always want to see that connection where if I solve it, that picture that we know about this graph should show up in the slope field pattern on our um, graph. Okay, any questions with that? Okay, let's look at number three here. Again, we're going to go down our four options and see what um, what uh, observations we can make here. So first characteristic, slope zero. Do you see slope zero on this slope field? OK, the question, uh, the, the answer is, is maybe. OK, why is it a maybe? OK, so it could be hiding behind the x-axis, right? So here the x-axis could either be nothing or it could be hiding a slope zero. The reason why I want to point that out is because on the AP exam, they, they, they do that as well, where they hide this information either purposely or, uh, or you know, or just, just because of the way that, that they create their graphs. But just have to understand that, you know, because of this um, vagueness to it, we may have to res uh, 
rely on other information to narrow down our choices. But so just understand that a lot of times um, we can't depend on the x-axis because it could be one of two things and we don't know exactly what it's um, what it's showing. So right now I'll just say, OK, maybe. The slope is zero. When y equals zero, but we're not going to be able to depend on that because it could go both ways. OK, um, what about uh, slope undefined? Do you see any place where slope is undefined for sure? Yeah, so here again, we can't rely on this, right? But we can rely on this, though, because there's nothing here, right? There's nothing on the y axis. And it's not hiding vertical lines because we know vertical lines is not going to show up on a slope field. So yes, there is slope undefined. when x equals zero along the y-axis. Okay, what about a collection of positive slopes? Do you see a collection of positive slopes that we can kind of make some general um, observations about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first quadrant and third quadrant, right? So they're all, so that's, if we're able to make those general statements, it, it's going to be really helpful in eliminating the choices that are wrong. Um, positive slopes, quadrant one, quadrant three. Okay, how about negative slopes? Okay. Okay, we can go and uh, look at all these characteristics, but I think what's going to help us most is this slope undefined. So that means if I plug zero into my slope into my differential equation, I must get undefined. If I don't get undefined, I can just eliminate it. Okay. How about uh, x minus two here? Keep or eliminate. Eliminate, right? If I plug zero in for x, I'm not getting undefined. I'm getting negative two, and negative two is not consistent with what we know to be true here. X cubed. Zero, right? Zero is not the same thing as undefined, so we know that's out. X minus Y. Yeah, it's still zero, or it, it could be under it could be defined as some other number, but it's definitely not undefined, right? Right? How about Y over X? Keep, right? Because when X equals zero, it doesn't matter what the Y value is. If there's a zero in the denominator, it's always going to be undefined. So this is a candidate. How about e to the y? There's there's not even zero to plug in, right? So it, it's not even dependent on zero. So okay. Let me, let's just go down the other options. Um, when y equals zero, we are getting zero for the most part. So it looks like it really was hiding slope zero behind the x-axis. Okay. Positive slopes, quadrant one and quadrant three, that's true because in quadrant one, both the X and Y are positive. That's positive. In quadrant three, both X and Y are negative and negative or negative is positive. Quadrant two and four has one positive and the other negative. So when one is positive and the other is negative, that's always going to produce negative values. So that's consistent. Okay. So we we see how the match is made with each of the individual points. But let's solve this differential equation so we can kind of get a picture as to what this graph is going to look like. So if you guys can cross off number four and we're just going to spend the time to solve the differential equation that we've already identified as the correct answer from part D. It is also good practice for us to get some additional work in with solving differential equations. OK, so dy over dx equals y over x. Right, we're going to cross multiply. So pair the diagonals together. It may not separate variables, but it will set up your dy dx's nicely. OK, so from part D again, we're going to we're not going to.
do number four. So we're going to use the space for number four to extend this problem a bit. OK, cross multiply your dy dx are nicely set up. Those are locked in. Do not move them. But now we take a step back and ask, do we have full separation of variables? No, right? What has to move? Okay. So we got to divide the X to the right and we have to divide the. The Y to the left, right? So any type, anytime you have a dividing going on, they're going to end up in the denominator of the other side. So let's see what that will look like. If I divide the Y over, I get dy over y. If I divide the x over, I get dx over x. Okay. Are we good with that step? All right, so we're just taking the terms that are not in the right places, dividing them over, but if they divide them, they're both going to end up in the denominator of the other side. But at least we have separation of variables. dy, dx's are up top. It's OK to have x and y's below. You can have rules that can handle them. Don't just bring them up and make it y dy and x dx. We're changing the problem if we do that. OK, take the integral of both sides. OK, oh, uh, if you want to rewrite this, make it 1 over y dy. Maybe that's visually a little bit um, more familiar. OK, what does uh, 1 over y turn into? Yeah. Natural law, get absolute value of y. Okay, one over x becomes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have the plus t show up. Okay, so calculus is done. We brought everything up to the function level, but we still have to solve for y. Okay, okay. how do we get that natural law to go away? Yeah, raise with a base of e. Now everything that you have in front of you is sitting at the exponent level except for your base E's. OK, what happens on this left side? E and natural log cancel out. I'm left with absolute value of Y. OK, the right side, let me remind us if we have a base raised to the sum of exponents. I can break them down into the product of bases. So how can I separate this? Using this property. OK, e to the natural log of X. Notice your units will change is no longer a plus. If you bring the exponent of um, operation down, it becomes a multiplication. So not plus, but times. E to the C. OK, what do you know about E to the C? Just C, Just C. OK, good. OK, what cleanup can we do here? E and natural log X will also cancel out, just ask the value of X. Okay, so Y, ask the value of Y equals ask the value of X times C. I can pull the C out in front. The ask the value, they both produce plus or minus, but then the C will take in any positive negative values that you give it. So we can drop both ask the values and we're just left with Y equals CX. Okay, what do you know about Y equals CX? What does this look like? It's just a line, right? It's just a linear graph with a lot of different slopes that could be possible, right? C could be negative two, it could be one half, it could be eight, it could be 12. So do you see a bunch of lines here with all different slopes? Yes, okay, so the solution matches with the picture that we see in front of us, right? We see all these line segments, they all have different slopes, and that's consistent with y equals cx. Now, we're going to sketch a graph through this point. OK, so the point is all the way down here. So highlight that point and you're just going to follow the flow of the graph. Up to the origin. But we know there's a break at the origin, right? Because uh, slope is undefined at zero. So as, as soon as it hits a roadblock, you're going to stop the graph. Okay. We're never going to sketch a graph and let it jump over a, a hole or asymptote and let it continue. So we only care about the branch that contains the point. So if it hits a place where the slope is undefined, then you just stop the graph there. Okay. So here, the solution is only going to extend 
to the origin and not beyond it. And we pick the side because this is the side that has the point that we want to include. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, we're gonna skip um, pages um, eight and nine and 10. I'm not gonna ask you guys right now to sketch a slow field with that many points. Uh, what I'm more concerned about is being able to interpret slow fields. So let's just continue to do some more of that work on page 11. So page 11, we're going to go down our four characteristics and see if we can make some general statements about where we observe them. Slope zero, slope undefined, slope positive, and slope negatives. Okay, I know it's a little bit hard to see those options there, so I'm going to list them out here under A, B, C, and D. OK, so let's go down our options here. OK, do you see slope zeros? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this in this case is a little bit easier. Uh, in this case, they are actually showing what's behind that line there. But just be aware that uh, on tests and AP exams, sometimes you got to rely on something else because it doesn't sh it, it, it leaves it kind of vague. Okay, but in this case, we can say that for sure. Okay, do you see any places where slope is undefined? X equals zero. Yeah, x equals zero, right. We see nothing on the y-axis, so we know that this, that's, a, that's a gap where slope is not being filled in. OK, what about positive slopes? Nowhere, OK, so no positive slopes. That means that if I see any positive slope possibilities in my answer choice, I can remove them, right? OK, do I see negative slopes? Yes. Mostly, right? Most everywhere is negative slopes, except where we see slope zero and slope undefined. So I see two um, characteristics that should eliminate a bunch of wrong choices for us. The fact that if I see any negative slopes, I can remove it as well as if I insert zero in for X, I should be getting just a straight up undefined. Okay, so for A, keep or remove. Okay, remove because of this, right? When X equals zero, dy dx is undefined. So if I plug zero in for x, am I getting undefined guaranteed? No, right? It's I mean, I'm getting zero, but y squared can be other values. So we're not going to get undefined there. How about b? Remove as well, right? If I'm inserting zero in for x, I'm getting y, but y is not undefined, at least not everywhere. Okay, x squared over y. Remove y. But is is this going to be guaranteed to give us negative values? No, right? So this is sometimes positive, sometimes negative. We know that can't be true. And then for D, 
Yeah, when x equals zero, I'm getting undefined and I'm getting negative values because x squared and y squared is guaranteed to give me positives. And then if I put a negative in front, then every value I can think of is always going to be forced negative because it'll be it'll be positive before the negative gets introduced. OK, try number two. Yeah, I think we have to uh, maybe ignore the X and Y axis because those tick marks are for the uh, X and yeah, so sometimes that's also another possibility of being uh, purposely vague where we don't can't really tell whether those tick marks are for slow fields or whether it's to indicate the Y values on the Y axis. So let's depend on something else then. Okay, which options do you guys decide on for number two? C. C, yeah. And I think uh, the giveaway here is the positive slopes, right? Like most everything is a positive slope. And the only difference equation that's going to give me a positive slope every time is x squared over y squared, right? If you're looking at y squared over x, I mean, it's a lot of times it is positive, but as soon as x is negative, then I should be seeing a negative slope. I don't see any negative slopes here at all. Yeah. Uh, let's say, uh, let's see, say it again. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think, I think it is no slope. So that just tells us that those markings are for the y intercepts and not for the slope field. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the x axis. Oh, x axis. Yes, it is undefined along the x axis. But it's being, but it's, but we can't really tell, right? Because it's, it's, being hidden by the by the um, by the x axis, right? So yeah, just be aware that sometimes that um, uh, your x your x and y axis is not giving you a full detailed information that you would like to see because it's either being hidden or it's being it's being um, overtaken by the tick marks of the x and y intercepts. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can we do one more here? Number three. Try number three. Sorry, if it's hard to read those. Let me see if I can rewrite them.
Okay, any uh, guesses for number three? Let's see, yeah. So I'm focusing on this portion here. Any value where X is in the first quadrant where Y is greater than two, I should be getting all positive numbers. Sorry. Getting all positive numbers. And this is the only one that's going to give me a guaranteed positive there. OK, so uh, tonight you guys can focus on trying to finish uh, homework from Thursday, Friday, and then we're going to do a bit more uh, slow fields tomorrow. But we're going to focus our attention on just extending what we did last Thursday and practicing separating variables and trying to solve differential equations.